Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. So I've just gotten the last two pieces of equipment I need for my new smaller rig. And the first one of these two pieces is the new Astro Oasis motor focuser. They've called it the Rose. This is version two. Uh, and I wanna just do an unboxing of this, uh, show you exactly how it works. I'm gonna show it fitted and how to fit it to my scope here, the uh, Ascar 71F. And we're also going to connect it up in Nina and I'm going to show you how it works within Nina using the supplied ASCOM driver. So uh, stick around and take a look at this. Okay, so in front of me I've got the new Astro Asus version 2 electronic focuser. Uh, I have opened the box, but that's as much as I've actually done. So you're seeing it for the first time with me. So it's, it's a newer version of their original one. It's got a few new features. Um, it's a lot smaller. And what we'll do is we'll get it, this open. Okay, so it's the same cardboard box as before. And in the box we've got the list of parts and there is a couple of new extra parts which I'll go through. The motor focuser itself, the mounting bracket, there's a gear locator plate which is to make sure you fit the gear in the right, exactly the right position so it engages correctly. Whether you can see that. Now in the box everything's individually labelled. That's marked up as USB cable. That's marked up as the main focuser assembly. Really nice uh, bit of machining. Lovely bit of kit. I do like their focuses. I have really enjoyed using their version one. And this is the gear locator, we've got the clamps, we've got the temperature probe, hex keys, another box of gears and a box of screws. So, the how I asked for the clamp to fit particularly to my Ascar 71 flat field scope. So that's the gear that goes on your focus the shaft on your particular scope. This is the clamp which again is for my particular Ascar scope which I asked for. It's a 34mm version. Uh, they do different versions of these, different sizes for different size scope collars. USB cable Again, standard USB to USB-C, because this is now USB-C port. That comes with it. I've got a temperature probe. Standard temperature probe. And then the hex keys that we'll need. Selection of hex keys we'll need when we uh, get round to fitting and then the screws. Now the screws are to fit this, this piece here to the actual focuser body and then there's a lock screw, this little red one here which goes in the bottom of there. So what's different about this one to the first model? Well this one is a lot smaller, it's slightly narrower They've moved to USB-C and also with this one you actually don't need a separate power cable. It will actually be powered directly from the USB-C port but you can add power if you've got a particularly heavy camera rig. Um, you can actually add a 12 volt power to it if required. I don't think I will with mine so I'll probably just be using it with the USB-C. It's still got the clutch mechanism. So off, which means you can turn your original focus knobs or engaged 
and what that does is you can see it moves the actual gear so it engages that's engaged when it's on the on the scope and then that's disengaged to allow you to use the manual knobs on the other side of the scope so they've kept that but they've still managed to make it shorter but it seems a lot firmer a lot more firmer there doesn't seem to be any movement in the two halves of the body there was a little bit in the other one but there isn't on this one yeah very impressive that is so what we're going to do is we're going to fit this to my Ascar 71 I'm going to show you how to fit it show you how to use the gear locator to make sure we get the actual gears that you'll get the gears fitted in the correct position so that when this is on they engage fully with that because if you've got these and one of them's if this isn't on the shaft far enough or it's on too far it's not going to engage properly with the gear in there and you need it to fully engage okay so that's what the new gear locator is for I'm not sure yet exactly how it works but as soon as I figure it out I shall uh, show you when we're fitting this to my um, Ascar 71F scope and show you. So this is just a comparison between the two versions of these focuses, motor focuses. As you can see there's quite a considerable difference in the length, probably around 20, 20 millimetres in difference in length. There's also two or three millimetres difference in the actual width. And then you can see on the back, we've moved from a USB, standard USB-B cable to a USB-C. But they've still got the, the clutch system just the same. But I just wanted to show you the difference there in the sizes between the version 1 and the version 2. They both work equally well. They're both... Uh, the same resolution and they're actually they're twice the resolution of my Pegasus motor I highly recommend the new Rose version okay so I've got my Ascar 71 F flat field scope here I've turned it upside down to make it easier for you guys to see first thing we're going to do is remove this focus knob which is just a single screw on there and then that removes like that the next thing you need to do is in the box of gears that you get with yours make sure you find the correct size gear and these gears fit with the teeth facing the scope so the next thing you want to do is just slide that on with the little lock screw on the gear on the flat the flat section of the uh, focus shaft I'm just going to nip that up so it can't spin round off off the flat section like so and then the gear locator quite clever it bolts to the other side of the collar just I've just put two screws in now just to show you and then you just fit the collar as if you were actually fitting the focuser and if you can see when you push it right on the focuser shaft just sticks through the hole and what you do is you just make sure that the gear is pushed up against the inside of that locator. So once I know that's pushed right up against the inside of that locator, I can then just nip that up. Make sure it's tight so it's not going to move. I can then just remove the collar and give it one final tweak like that. So we know now that that is in exactly the right position. We can remove that and then remove, we can remove the gear locator tool. And now we can bolt the collar to the inside of this, like so, with the same three screws and fit the motor to the scope just fitting the screws to the collar just knit those up make sure they're nice and tight just turn this and make sure it's in the off location and then 
fit that in, tighten that up, that collar up onto the scope, and then you can now turn this to the on location. And as you turn it, if you just wiggle this side of the scope to make sure it's fully engaged, now that's fully engaged now, that won't turn at all. So when this is on your scope fitted like this now, you can, you can lock that off and it's engaged and it's perfectly fitted. If I just loosen that and click that to the off position, now I can focus the scope manually and move it as much as I want. And then again, back to the on position, just wiggle that to make sure it's engaged because sometimes if the teeth, if the teeth hit like that rather than like that, then it's not going to engage properly. So, off, on, as you can see it's going all the way to the on, all the way to the off, enables it to move, all the way to the on, is solid, and it now won't move. And then once it's in the on position, like I say, you just lock it off. So that's how you fit it, that's how you use the location tool. Looks very neat. As you can see, it doesn't really stick out. The knob was, was sort of there, so it's only sticking out an inch and a half more than the original focus knob. So yeah, looks quite neat. So what we'll do now is we'll get it hooked up to Nina and install the drivers and just check it out with Nina. Now there is a Bluetooth app with this focuser, but the Bluetooth app will only work, the Bluetooth on the focuser will only work with the app. You can't use it through ASCOM with the Bluetooth, unfortunately. Whether that will come at a later date, I do not know. Um, I have asked about that. So to testing, you can just put the app on your phone uh, and you can connect to this focus and just make sure it's all moving and everything's okay. Uh, but we're going to get it connected to Nina now, put the draw ASCOM driver on uh, and just show you it working in Nina. Okay, so we're in Nina at the moment and we're on the imaging tab. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go to the equipment tab and then we're going to choose Oasis Focuser from the drop down box, which you already selected. And then we're going to click on, you can click on the settings tab. There are some settings here within the ASCOM driver, but I suggest you leave all these alone unless you feel that you really need to change them. Um, there is a reverse direction depending on your focuser, but again, it's up to you whether you need to change this or not. And then just click OK and then connect. And as you can see there, the focuser is now connected with the latest driver version. It's got the max increment set at 80,000, max step at 80,000, and the current position of 40,000. So what we're actually going to do now, we're going to put this from 40,000 to 60. 60,000, and we're going to click move. And if you look at the right-hand corner of the screen, you should see the focuser moving on the scope. So you heard it beep and now you can see it moving to the position that I've selected. Now the one thing I do want to point out with this is that I did need to have the 12 volt power connected to the focuser because I found that it did stall with only using the USB power. I was quite surprised by this because I thought it would, especially on a scope with nothing fitted to the back of it currently, I thought it would work no problem but it didn't, it actually stalled. So I had to plug the 12 volt power in. Now it has got an anti-stall feature. So if it feels that it can't move the load or the load is jammed or the focus is jammed for some reason, then it will stall. So it won't do any harm or any damage to the, to the motor itself. Uh, and this did, this did uh, actually come on during the first time I tried this. So I did have to put the 12 volt power on. So we'll just move that back 40,000 move and you can see it going back in now the beep you can hear when it starts to move you can actually turn off that is a feature you can turn on or off and there you can see it move back to the original position i hope that was of some interest if so think about subscribing if you haven't already and leaving a like 
and uh, I'll catch you in the next video which is going to be about the new power box I've bought for this new setup. Thanks for watching and clear skies.